So, I'm finding more and more that the reviews that I have the hardest time doing are the ones for books or movies that are just really, really good. And it's usually because there is so much going on in it that it's really hard to keep the review short. I could literally go on talking about it for an hour or more. Such is the case with today's review, the review of the second graphic novel that I bought in the collection of four, Watchmen. <laughs> other three graphic novels that I had bought, most of you correctly guessed that I had bought Watchmen, and how could you not guess that? It is one of the major stories of the genre. And I don't often do this, but I can sum up my reaction to this story in one word. Damn. I mean, holy crap is this book loaded, and I am going to talk about some of the best aspects of the book, and I'm going to do my best to keep this review relatively short. Watchmen takes place in an alternate reality where in the 30s and then later in the 50s and 60s a group of masked heroes decided to put on costumes and go out and fight crime. So basically it's an alternate reality where superheroes exist. And I shouldn't really say superheroes because there's really only one, arguably two, superheroes in this story. When you say superheroes it kind of implies people with superhuman abilities, but most of the characters in this story are just ordinary people like you or me or Bruce Wayne who decided to train themselves and to put on costumes and to go out at night and fight crime. These masked heroes, and also the superheroes, helped America to, among other things, win the war in Vietnam. However, as often happens in stories such as these, people started to become frightened of these superheroes, and eventually they were banned from the streets and forced to retire. Now, already you might be thinking that the story sounds kind of familiar, and indeed, as I was reading it, I was seeing influence of this novel in other things that I had watched, like The Incredibles and the first season of Heroes. The whole book basically takes the idealized world of superheroes and turns it completely on its head. In the world of superheroes, everything is pretty clear-cut. There are good guys, there are bad guys. There's right and there's wrong, and I know that that's not true of all superheroes, but like the traditional superhero genre, like Superman, that's pretty much the way it is. But this story isn't like that. There is no right or wrong or good or bad. Everybody, all of the heroes, all of the villains, everybody is pretty much on the same level. There is no one protagonist or antagonist, and much of the story deals with the question of what is morality, what constitutes what's right and what's wrong. And just like in V for Vendetta, Alan Moore doesn't tell the readers what to think. Optimism and pessimism are pretty much there in equal measure, and it's up to the reader to take away what he wants to take away from the story. We also get several different points of view, not just from the masked heroes, but also from just ordinary people and getting their take on what's happening. And what is happening is the threat of nuclear annihilation. The doomsday clock is ticking down to midnight. In layman's terms, that means the world is ending and we all gonna die. And in addition, there seems to be somebody who has it out for these retired masked heroes and seems to be killing them off or disposing of them in some way. That's the basic plot, but ultimately this is really more of a multiple character study, looking into the psychiatric issues involved with these masked heroes. And one of the ways in which the story does this, and one of the things that I really like about this story, is the structure. Both Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, who did the artwork, really understand how to take the advantages of graphic novels and use them to their fullest. The marriage of words and pictures in this is incredibly compelling. One of the things that this story does is it kind of weaves the story of The Watchmen with another comic book story that exists within the world of The Watchmen, and we kind of see the parallels between those two different things. In addition, every chapter is told a little bit differently depending on who it is that's telling that particular story. For example, there's a character in the story who seems time very differently from most of us. He sees it in a very non-linear fashion, all points of time kind of existing as one. And so his story is also told in a very non-linear fashion. One person has a story told by way of a psychiatric evaluation. One person has a story told in a different method. Each method is just a little bit different, but it's indicative of what's going on in the story and indicative of the character that the story is studying at that particular time. Now, I will say that this story is probably not for everybody. It's dark and uncompromising, and a lot of the images are, for lack of a better word, graphic. This is not a light read, but it is 
a good one. And if you are a fan of graphic novels or you are starting to get into graphic novels like I am, you definitely need to check out The Watchmen and see how they use the advantages of the medium of graphic novels to their fullest. It really is quite amazing. And anybody who is a fan of the superhero genre should definitely check out this book. And incidentally, yes, I'm aware of the movie. I haven't watched it yet, but I have it sitting right here on my television and I do plan on watching it and I do plan on doing a books versus movie of it at some point. Don't be deterred by the fact that this is a graphic novel. I mean, it's a graphic novel, but it is still a very serious story, and it is a good story, and definitely one worth checking out. On the worth meter, I would give this a worth owning new, no question. And that does it for another book review. Until next time, this is Matt Guyon asking for words of wisdom. I'm running out, so maybe some of you would like to send me some words of wisdom that you would like me to say at the end of these videos. Leave them in the comments or as a video response. Bye, everybody. Pearl of Wisdom. Never make a YouTube video with poor lighting and a crappy webcam. Oh.